Hello YouTube. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about master and slave boundaries. Uh, this uh, tutorial will be uh, into interest of uh, people who have or who are dealing with a very complex um, model. And what you will get with this master-slave boundaries is basically you will reduce the complexity of your design. And if you have a very good uh, computation and resources, but you don't care about the complexity of your application, I don't think that the master-slave boundaries is going to be a good topic for you. And you can easily just do the simulations for your full model. Um, as always, I'm going to use a very uh, simple model. And we have the same process of modeling for, for the very first uh, video of the of the tutorial. The second video will be dedicated to the excitations one and boundary and setup and mesh, and the third video will be the analysis of the full model. Uh, and then with, in the fourth video, we will see uh, what we can get with this applying the master slave boundaries into only one fourth of the full symmetric model and see that whether or not we can get the same result. Or, um, and also compare the accuracy of the results that we can achieve with the master-slave. Um, so if you're interested into the master-slave setup, just jump into the fourth video of this tutorial. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, follow me and we can practice uh, from the beginning the modeling and uh, go forward uh, towards the comp com comparing the master-slave uh, model um, with the full model. Okay, um, as always, we want to make sure that um, before I actually talk about the uh, the model, I want to tell you one thing about the master slave boundary. So the master and slave boundary is going to uh, to basically when you apply that boundary into a plain air surface, you cannot apply to the curvature surface. You are applying into the planar surface and when you apply that basically what it does is the slave the slave the slave basically face is going to have exactly the same edge field uh, that the the master field has and they will basically copy each other the way that the transformation of the edge field from master to the slave will be done is basically uh, all specified by the coordinate system on both master and a slave boundaries. So that's basically a very quick uh, definition of what is a master and a slave uh, boundaries. And now we are ready to go uh, and dive into the model. Um, before I do the modeling, as always, I want to make sure that you guys are on the same page. Uh, you are uh, using the under the model under the <coughs> Maxwell 3D. You want to go to the solution type and make sure that you are in the magnetostatic. Uh, if you remember, I said that the master slave is going to copy whatever edge field is in the master plane to the um, a slave plane. Now, if you are in the electrostatic um, basically type of simulation, it will copy all the electric field from the master plane into the slave plane. So uh, just make sure that you uh, you basically understand the fact in the magnetostatic simulations, then you can just duplicate whatever uh, you see here into the electrostatic um, simulations. So let's, for this uh, purpose of this uh, tutorial, let's stick with the magnetostatic and uh, make sure that the unit uh, that you are actually using um, under the model is in millimeters. So these are the only two things that you want to care about. So uh, I'm going to use a primitive a stator um, where uh, I'm going to use a, a primitive models of an stator that has four poles and uh, basically uh, we are going to only uh, simulate one of the poles after we apply the master slave boundaries and see what we can get with the results. So, uh, first, I'm going to go and uh, uh, make sure that the uh, materials 
that I have is not vacuum. I just don't, I want to have a nickel. So basically, uh, we'll search ni, and it automatically goes on nickel. Just press OK, and that will become our default materials here. So now we can uh, import uh, stator uh, from the primitive um, <coughs> that is predefined already. So first, go to draw and then go to the user defined primitives if you don't find this user defined primitives which is very rare case uh, it means that you didn't set up your maxwell right if you do a good setup you have to have all these primitives and examples okay um, go to the system web and under the rm or the rm expert you select um, srm core okay just select this one Okay, now I'm going to give you some numbers here. You can actually change these numbers uh, if you don't uh, follow exactly the same design. Uh, but here, uh, for for example, the di the diagnostic the the dia gap, which is the diameter of the gap, uh, put a value of 80. Um, for the yoke diameters, put uh, 150. So we have a uh, we have more uh, yoke diameter for the lens put 10 and uh, for the poles number of poles put four poles as I said um, also for the <coughs> info core uh, type the value 1 well here uh, basically you can see what that means I mean if you go and uh, make it smaller and uh, open up this description uh, you basically should be able to see what the value of 1 represents and what the value of 0 represents so 0 basically represent um, the number of basically 1 uh, determine, det represent the number of terminals here and um, so uh, you just put this values and just press OK Okay, now we have this uh, model here, and it's pretty good. Now, what you want to do is you want to um, first call it a stator. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that and call it a stator. And then I'm going to go to the modeler and I want to separate the bodies. So I'm going to go to Modeler, and then I'm going to go to the Boolean, and then I want to say Separate Bodies. So with that, with that, we basically have the, co the coil separated from the stator. So let's uh, put a name for each coil and, uh, and go ahead from that point. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it just easier and uh, call the the all these uh, stator separated one two three four to coil one coil uh, three coil two and coil four so in that case the coil three and one are uh, in front of each other and coil four and coil two are in front of each other as well so I'm gonna go with the coil um, sep stator separate one and basically change that to coil one and I press enter for that, and then you go to the uh, 2, and you call it coil 3, and then you go to 3, and you call it coil 2, and then you go to 4, and call it coil basically 4. So now, <coughs> you basically have coil 1, and then coil 3 in front of each other, and coil 2, and coil 4 in front of each other. And you can change the color if you want. Um, in this case, I can actually make the transparency uh, less, so you basically see at the end what we are talking about. So I'm going to put uh, all the colors. Um, uh, for different poles, we can put different colors um, just, just to be able to distinguish them. So pole, pole number, coil number 4 is going to be yellow, and then uh, coil number 3 is going to be very reddish. You can, you can choose any other colors if you want. Uh, I'm going to put the opacity to 0. Coil number 2 is going to be... Uh, basically, uh, we have red, blue, and then... We, have, we can have blue, so here's the blue. And basically, coil number 1 can be any color that you want. We can make it greenish, something like that. And uh, for the transparency, we can actually select um, 0 for this. Okay, so there we go. We got the coils, and um, I can actually make the transparency of the stator as well to almost zero, so we can actually see the entire design at the end of it. Okay, so that's what we get, and um, let me move it so you can see what we are looking at. 
a very uh, simple state there that we have. Now, um, what we want to do here is we want to uh, basically we are done with the design of the stator. The only thing that we have to do is we have to change the materials of the coil one, two, and three. And uh, I'm pressing Control key uh, and press and hold, and then selecting all these coils and assign a material. Here I'm gonna put Cooper, and so. Cooper is here and I'm pressing OK. So everything is in is in Cooper now, and uh, that basically concludes our modeling of uh, this section. In the next video, I'm gonna put the the, the excitation and uh, look at the um, setup. Okay, great.